Hey guys, so this is my second pool video and will be my last pool video. The problem with this video is that uh, when I was doing my pool, I actually had the mic. Uh, I actually tried the record. I did command on it and I noticed after the first few uh, recording, uh, because I did not record everything in a stretch, I kind of did a little bit here and there. I was planning to merge them. Um, but the problem is I forgot to on the mic. So I was just recording the internal video. So yeah, so there was no commentary. So and I'm now doing a voice uh, over on this video. But anyway, uh, the main point here, I'm not really talking about my pools. Uh, but just for you to know, I was pulling on this banner specifically so that I can get more duplicate FR and then I can merge the FR in order to get more Force Enhancement Stones to upgrade the characters and whatever extra G token then I you know I exchange for the BT for other characters that is not in this banner I choose this banner also because I have 5 BT that I do not have and they are all in this banner so this is like the best banner but end up i kind of like have to pity all of them anyway i think the only two that i get for free that i do not have is noel and kuja yeah I, I think that's that's about it then the rest i have to pity I, I have about like 27 bt that i do not have at this point when i was pulling so i pt 25 bt anyway I have all the BTs now and the FR now and they are all maximized. Um, even all the high armor for all characters are maximized. I wasn't able to maximize uh, all the characters FE up to level 50. And yeah, uh, still a long way more to go. I have over 60 characters that has FE 50 but over 90 characters that still do not have FE 50. Anyway. Uh, I'm not talking about my pools like I say. You can just watch the video on... Um, I don't know, sometimes it's just fun. I like to see what is the rate. Like after so many pulls, there's just no BT. Sometimes BT comes uh, back to back. It's just fun to look at that. So I guess if you want to look at that, then you can just watch the pool. But actually in this video, I want to make three, um, I want to talk about three things. Uh, first of all, why I think the game failed. Second, what could have been done to improve the game. And I actually planned for that video just right before end of service. Um, so yeah, so and I, I scrapped that entire thing because it's already end of service. But uh, after a while, you know, seeing a lot of people talk about it in Reddit, in um, different, different uh, channels. So I thought I might as well just put a vid, you know, just to talk about it again in this video. Uh, but I guess even if I posted the video last week, it would not have made a difference because they have already probably planned for the end of service probably several months back, you know, so it wouldn't have made a difference. Uh, third of all, what I would hope, uh, there are some people that wish for an offline version of this game and I really hope that that can happen. And if that happened, what I want to be in the game, like with minimal uh, development, and then they can sell it off as an offline game to all of us and we could have that probably still enjoy the game okay so first of all why i think the game failed due to three specific reasons and the first reason is fight is just too easy units is overpowered right so fight has not been balanced properly i know they can do it they still give us difficult fight you know Despite all the complaints like, oh, HP gate sucks, um, fight is just too long. But without these fights, you know, difficult fights, there is just no reason for anyone to pull for most of the weapon unless they are favorite or they are like super meta and you would want them uh, in order to execute certain combos. So you will start pulling, but you will not, um, probably all of us has not been pulling uh, weapons in order to complete the fight. In fact, last few months, fight has literally no mechanics at all. Yeah, so in JP, when that happened, they introduced Ri Shin Ryu. So I believe when they introduced Ri Shin Ryu, they have not planned for the end of service yet. But probably because after they have implemented Ri Shin Ryu and hoping that the revenue would increase, it actually did not. It did increase um, due 
during the first month when they just introduced Rishin Ryu, the revenue increased from about 100,000 over, it increased to 300,000 over. Then I'm not sure what happened, but the next month, even the Rishin Ryu is easy. They start to introduce um, orbs that you can increase just by doing elemental damage and battery and those are really easy condition to fulfill and to the point that we can use back our fast charger supercharger um, yeah in order to charge the gauge and then kill the enemy right off then it back to the situation where I probably don't even have to pull in order to win the fight so yeah so regarding fights what could have been done okay um yeah this is what i actually wanted to talk about um if you have been have been in my discord i have actually posted some of the points uh, on how to make fight better a lot of us uh, mentioned you know how bad fr is that fr killed the game well again in my opinion i don't really think so but I do agree that it sometimes can feel very boring at the initial um, part of the fight where we have to charge the gauge up and then we are dealing literally no damage during that phase until we have entered FR phase. And even after we set everything up, then we blow the enemy right up in a BT phase. You know, bypassing so many mechanics and making all fight literally feel the same. So, in order to improve that, first of all, I think the orb is actually a good uh, option. But what they need to do is actually to start the fight. Maybe you know, giving us like sixty or fifth, at least fifty percent uh, force gauge, so we don't have to waste too much time trying to charge the gauge. And with FE50, like fully FE50, we can easily get to 100 just in about 3 to 4 turns. So just like the Dare to Defy fights that we get during this end of service, the, the first 7, we all start at 50% and it felt so much nicer to quickly charge the gauge and then get our FR face up and start the fight because we all know the fight actually start when our force time is activated and that is when we actually plan on what we want to do or how much damage we want to deal in order to bring the enemy's HP down as much as possible. The other problem now is force time when we activate it, the boss force time just stop, right? So when the force time stop, a lot of the force mechanic, you know, the boss force mechanic is frozen and to me that's still rubbish because you know there are some fights where to a certain point of the force gauge then boss will actually like warp in or they, they will do some uh, HP attack and when they fully charge they will do their force attack so I was thinking if our force don't freeze the enemy force gauge and they still can do their force attack it's just like re in region real they no longer have a force time boss do not have a force time so when they do a force attack it get reset back up uh, down to zero and then when they charge 100 they do another force attack so if they can do this force attack when we are in the fr phase it would have made everything much more challenging because we need to understand the force mechanic what would they do at every interval uh, when you know like at 30% they will warp turn or at 30% they will do something so all that will feel uh, like we have to interact with the boss or else we will just charge it up get into force time then charge out the HP damage bonus and the BT phase boss is dead right the interaction between players and boss is no longer there but one problem now is if that is the case and boss will be attacking then counter attackers and often can be a problem uh, because enemy will just suicide to their death uh, we have already shown how we can actually do that so yeah so when we implement this we are just 
um, how to say, um, we are just penalizing BT phase, but we are giving too much leverage for off turn. So I was thinking that that is where the op comes in. If you give enemy too much turn, then the op will explode. So let's say, you know, so sometimes when we do off turn, like you are using Calgary solo or Ruby solo, enemy can be taking five, six turn, and then they yeah so this is why the solo works because enemy just takes so many turn and we deal so much damage when they take so many turn but now if you have the op let's say at eight count and every time the boss take a turn it reduced by three and let's put it this way that counter attacks and preemptive attack though basically those often attack will not affect the op so it can't increase the op or if it does it's just by one so if the enemies will be taking too many turns without the player taking turns then the op will explode so in this case we can't over rely on the off turn so off turn unit will come back more as like a tank and only when the boss does a force attack then you do a counter which is okay but not to the point that you remove all your speed then boss takes so many turns and then you just kill them, right? So to me, that was also a reason um, that the developer did not know what to do with off-turn units. But I think that the Lufinia AWP would have been the best uh, solution for that. Then things like HP Gate, um, you know, not every fight need to have HP Gate if the interaction is there. Sometimes they can introduce HP Gate in order to stop people from just going into BT phase and win the fight. Yeah, so at least the HP Gates uh, should have been there. Uh, in Rishin Rio, they actually did implement it in a way. Like, if you hit a certain HP threshold, you can't, you cannot damage the enemy anymore because they heal back whatever HP damage that they receive unless they fulfill another condition. So again, during the first two reach in Rio, that was great because the condition to cancel that is different. It's not the same as the one that you use to increase the op. So you kind of like, you have to bring something more into your party in order to fulfill that. But again, after one month, the, after the first month, the several subsequent reach in Rio fight all you need to do is do the same thing that you do for the orb. So in the end, it doesn't feel like we are actually doing anything at all, all right? You don't need to think about it. It's just that you just press the button and eventually you cancel off that HP threshold, that HP gate, then you just pass and then you win. Yeah, so in summary, increased boss HP to the point that we have to use FR twice right utilizing the hp damage bonus retain phase and things like that it would have been better um don't freeze force force gauge after we have activated our force time let them do their force attack and lastly make sure the op actually matters and to the point that it will stop us from abusing often a full off turn, especially solo. Solo should not exist. Yeah. So that is regarding the fight. Second thing is the mock pass. Um, when the profit or the revenue was going down, probably a uh, several, uh, I don't know, one or two years back, then they introduced premium pass and their revenue increased again. So we know that the premium pass actually works, and it is it is something that is good to keep the game alive. But after so many months, after so many Ultima Core that we get, after so many enhancement points that we get from Premium Pass, there is just no more reason for anyone to purchase the Premium Pass anymore. Enhancement point, I have maximum. I'm like, every new event, I have to waste my enhancement point to the point that I felt quite frustrated. You know, some OCD there like you don't want this thing to go to waste but you just there's just no place for me to use my announcement point anymore so and I, I do have to waste them then Ultima core I already have like six to seven Ultima weapon maximized like whip bow I don't really need those maximized and even fights now if you go 
uh, fight a Shin Ryu fight with the Ultima weapon, you will still win. Okay, so there is no reason for anyone to purchase the premium pass anymore. If they would have include that, uh, I don't know, poly something, the crystal passive points into the premium pass, it would have made more sense. I would have actually continued to purchase the premium pass. So I just get a little bit more core, that's fine. Then I get some more points and then I get some enhancement point even though it's a waste, but at least I felt the value of the premium pass being there. And in JP it's even worse, you only have 4 events. 4 events for the same price of that premium pass that previously was for 6 events. So, so yeah, even though they do increase the Ultima cores, but still, it felt really really like uh, no reason for me to actually purchase the premium pass anymore. I do know that they have a different package uh, for the points, so like would they expect everyone to start buying the crystal passive points? Um, the thing is, it is not necessary in the game, like we don't need those passive and because it's just overwhelmingly a lot to the point that you feel like, okay, if I start to purchase now, I still need several months and years in order to complete them. So in the end, a lot of players choose just not to bother about it and just um, build it you know, as we go. So, yeah. Third thing, everything felt overpriced in default, right? Costume is overpriced, buying gem is overpriced, like how much do you need to pay in order just to PT one BT? Well, back then, maybe that is fine because BT is like something really rare and every month we just get two new BT and when we get a BT, you can use it for three events. So at least you invest into that one BT, you know that you can you can like use it for the next three events and that would help you out. But now every event is a new BT, it's a new FR. So we are chasing so many BT and we are chasing so many FR, but all these resources still feels very expensive. I know that at least for me, I wasn't enjoying the fight anymore, but at least I'm joining the character's kit. So I'm I'm putting different different team up, different combo in order to, you know, do something really fun. And to do that, I need a lot of BT. Well, I have been fortunate that I have been saving my resources back in Chaos and Lufinia. So I do have a lot when the Shinryu uh, era started to the point that I can pull for every banner's FR and hope to get free BT from tickets and when I need them, I can PT them and I still have like, by the end of service, I still have 1 million gem and about 2,000 tickets. But not a lot of people have that. So those who have limited resource also felt like they are put into a certain corner, uh, fight is so easy, yet I do not have anything new to actually test the game out. So there is just no reason for them to play anymore. So if would, they would have actually reduced the price like costume, $5, or, you know, I would actually buy them, right? There's so many characters, my favorite, that I actually want to buy, but you know, costume being so expensive, I just don't feel like doing it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if I can, I would want every single BT, but obviously even when I was playing with uh, the resource that I have, I still skip some of the weapon. But if like let's say I can buy a BT with 10 you know uh, 10 USD or FR with 5 USD, I, I think that a lot of players would actually uh, buy them, right? So if they would have actually reduced this pricing, it would have made more sense. I think their revenue would have skyrocketed, but they decided that they do not want to do so. Actually, I really do not know why. I do not know what is the developer's decision or who they have been consulting with. But I do know that, especially in GL, we have been discussing, you know, fight being too easy, things has been too expensive and things that can have been done in order to improve this game. But none of it has really been taken into consideration. I only feel like the only thing that has been taken into consideration by the developer is complaints that Oh, HP gate is bad, then HP gate disappear. Or uh, fight takes too long. So previously fight was like 30 minutes long. Well, that is definitely too long, but I think somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes is okay. But now fight is just like five to 10 minutes. 
So they, they have been listening a lot to complaints, but、uh, recommendation to improve their game, which not necessarily felt like a complaint, did not get through to them. So nothing was being done in that perspective. Well, the game has already announced end of service, so there's no much point discussing about this, but I just want to put it out.、Um, lastly, Uh, what I want to talk about is my hope for this game. So, I do really still like the game. I spent my weekend playing this, upgrading the characters. I felt like, hey, this end of service actually got me playing the game more than before they announced the end of service. There's so many things for me to do.、Um, getting the FE Stone Fifth, you know, the fifth FE 50, upgrading all my characters, then trying them out. I also hope that they actually would have given us more of this material. Uh, back before the end of service,、uh, it gave me more reason like, to do the co op now. Like, you know, back in the oh, yes, one more thing to complain about is the grind. Every event、uh, before the end of service, the grind was horrible. Really, really horrible. In JP, they did it、uh, because it's only four events a month, but they really should not have done that way.、Um, they should have maintained six events a month in JP. Again, there is people complaining that there's just too many events and they do not have time to complete everything. Well, again, those are complaints. So, why did they listen to those complaints and then start reducing the event? I do not understand why.、Uh, again, same reason, they are just listening to complaints. They do not see what actually players want, or at least the majority of what players want. Yes, so the grind has been horrible. Yes, but now, you know, I'm doing the co op, trying to get as much、uh, force enhancement stone as possible so I can max everyone to FA50.、Uh, it really felt so much better to play the game that way. So, anyway,、um, I hope that they really come up with an offline version. And please bring the JP side. You already have the BT and the FR. You just have to translate it. Just bring it over to GL and then at least give us the. Chance to try. Well, well, I have a JP account, but there are so many other players in GL that do not have this JP,、uh, do not play JP. So, you know, Rufus, Angel, it felt so much fun to play them. So, if you have, if they would have b r i n g this to GL side, it would have actually helped increase the revenue. I think a lot of people h a s been saving. In order to get Rufus, to get Angel, to get so many characters next month, Gladiolus, that was supposed to be in December, but now it is no longer happening. Yeah, so I would hope that there is an offline version. And if they can include one more event, and that is a permanent event, a crevasse fight, like maybe they can have. 10 fight with different different bosses, or basically this there to the fight, this 21 fight.、Uh, you don't have, they don't have to make it locked down. They can have this fight, 21 fight, as individual fight. And each of these fights, we can have like 5 to 10 set of force time and 5 to 10 set of HP trash one mechanics to choose from. Right? So we can basically choose our poison. So this is how. Crevasse works, and if they would have i n c l u d e that with all the weapon, I would actually really, you know, if the game would cost 60 USD or something, I would actually pay for them. Or, I don't know, at least、um, for a mobile game, how much would you pay? Maybe 60 is too much, but premium pass is about 30, so it's just like two months premium pass, I guess. So, I would actually pay for them, and there is so much more like. If there are so many fights, 21 fights there, and there are so many conditions,、um, there are so many to mix the match and actually do something so the community can come up with challenges and then we can try, you know, different, com different team c o m different things to do. And if they would actually let us adjust their HP as well, so we can set like this is 50, 500 million, or 1 billion, or something. So we can actually do something creative on our own. So, please, I really hope that the developer would still consider this.、Um, maybe someone should do a pool in Reddit or something and see how many people would actually pay for the game. We can have, like, you know, if it's 60 USD, if it's 50 USD, 40, 30, 20, 10, or something. 
then then from that statistic they can actually decide would it be worthwhile to spend their time to further develop the game into an offline version and with people that have agreed you know to have to want to pay for the game well you know if they could have done something like a kickstarter but probably um, not sqex they won't be doing that but if they would actually do that then if they get a certain target then they would develop it into an offline version i really hope that they have something like that yeah the community is there you know the, the when they announce end of service everyone um, who like the game still want to have the game this has been one of the best i mean for me it's the best gacha it's the first gacha that i played then after that i tried a lot of other gacha it did not stick i always come back to default do content over it like i've been telling people i never plan to be a content creator i never plan to upload video or to create guides the reason i did videos was due to tcc challenge uh, where they forced me to upload my videos and from there it slowly grow then um, I started doing guides so I have been doing it for so long now it has been a part of what I do weekly and I enjoy that so I really hope that they would um, give us the offline version so if, if you want that maybe you can comment below uh, maybe I will start doing uh, a pull in reddit and hopefully that would catch the attention of uh, the developers and maybe I will give a message to Joshua or something yeah so let's hope for the best anyway um, the 7 fight Dare to Defy has been fun there's 14 more and they are all locked down it, uh, lock out so I'm looking forward for the next 14 fights and if you want to know what I have been planning for this end of service, there's one more thing that I want to do. I want to go back to the JP side. I want to pull for all the BTs just like I did for the GL side. Especially for characters that I did not pull their BT for and did not green them. Uh, like Sabin. Um, who else? There's few. Okay, um, Garland as well. Then there's also Leon. I did not green him. So there's still a lot of characters there that I haven't really truly explored. So I will be exploring that pool for their kit. Then I will do a video and I will complete my evaluation. So I've been doing so many eva evaluations for every single character that has been up in GL thus far. So I want to complete all of them. So yeah, across probably one video a day. So the first one would be Irvin, then Kate Sif. I will follow basically the timeline. Um, I will use them in probably the latest uh, Rishin Ryu or the fight that they should be featured in. Yeah, and actually to test them out and try some really fun things. So, anyway, that would be the end of this uh, video on the commentary. There is still like about 5 minutes for this pool video. But, yeah, basically in conclusion, I have done all my pools. I have gotten all my BTs, so... Anyway, good luck to you guys and have fun. Hopefully, again, I've been saying this so many times now, hopefully we do get the offline version of this game.